I well, want that's because to... there's no such thing as climate, right? Climate and everything are the same word. And I, that's what bothers me about the climate change types. It's like, this is something that bothers me about it technically. It's like, well, climate is about everything. Okay, I'm going to stop it there. So Peterson understandably got a lot of backlash for his incomprehensible rant about climate change a couple months ago. It goes on and on, and I will spare you the rest. I don't need to go into all of that. But I also thought that this quote was actually kind of prescient. I mean, at a very semantic level, and in a way he didn't intend at all, Jordan Peterson is right. The climate is everything, in that we stand to lose everything if we don't fight to protect it. Women's rights, labor rights, none of these things exist at all without an earth in which to have these things in the first place. The problem is that climate change is happening at rates that are inevitably already going to cause massive suffering. Limiting warning only to 1.5 Celsius, which would already cause severe damage to the earth, is an impossibility at this point. It's not going to happen. What's more likely now is 2.5 to 3 degrees Celsius minimum. That means basically a semi-apocalypse. Hundreds of millions, if not billions dead. Hundreds of millions of refugees, endless war, droughts, famines, a biodiversity collapse worse than almost any extinction in the history of Earth, with countless species permanently lost and countless ecosystems permanently damaged and destroyed. Some scientists have started to say not that the collapse of civilization is just possible, but that is the most likely outcome, that humanity itself might cease to exist. People love to make fun of crazy environmentalists chaining themselves to trees or lying in the road screaming themselves red-faced, but these kinds of people are in fact the most uncrazy, most grounded people alive. They fully understand the effects of environmental degradation, of climate change, and they understand its vast, uncountable consequences. Time's up. This is the final countdown. This is it. And yet there isn't anywhere near the amount of anger you'd think there might be. We are at the chicken little running terrified through the streets as the sky falls down stage. And yet no one's running through the streets. No one is really freaking out at all. It's like there is a mass voluntary ignorance among people. You have literal climate scientists saying, hey, uh, we're all gonna die horribly. Yet it's met mostly with a shrug. It seems a tiny minority is all that's really trying to do anything, not just believing in climate change and maybe tweeting in support of it, but actually getting out in the streets, protesting, doing civil disobedience. This isn't just a problem of the right wing or apolitical people either, but the left as well. We've long known that climate change is the single greatest threat facing mankind, period, but you wouldn't really know it if you were just looking from the outside in. The only time climate activists are ever really talked about at all is when they're being mocked by right-wingers. To the left, they're not the heroes they should be seen as. They're almost seen as embarrassments or bad optics. The fact that organizations like Just Stop Oil are doing civil disobedience, and yes, they move out of the way for ambulances, is because environmentalists have already tried legal methods for decades without success. I genuinely think many people are just in a state of denial about how bad things are because it's not pleasant to think about. And so the most important urgent issue ironically ends up relatively ignored because of how urgent it is. The problem is that there is nothing that will maximize all other issues. Issues of racism, of women's rights, LGBTQ rights, and so on and so forth, more than the economic and social collapses that will result from climate change, especially in the third world. This is a problem not among just us common folk, but among prominent leftist YouTubers as well. If you went on the supposedly left-wing bread tube, you would not really get an impression that there's much of an emergency at all. You wouldn't get the impression that things are all that bad from a subsection of YouTube that is supposed to be talking about the things that are bad. 
bringing light to them, confronting them, and helping us learn what to do to prevent these issues. A while back, the YouTuber Sean criticized someone for wishing death upon people in Florida for not believing in climate change. My original tweet in response wasn't very well worded, I'll admit. I really didn't want to just come off as an obnoxious dick, and I know I sort of came off like that. But what I was trying to say, and what I think I communicated better in subsequent tweets, was that while the lady is being very hyperbolic and over the top, and while I get this tweet is insensitive for the millions upon millions of people in Florida that aren't climate deniers, I also understand to a certain extent where she is coming from. Maybe she is just a lib who genuinely believes all of Florida should be wiped off the map. However, I might be wrong, but I understood her reaction as just coming from the frustration and anger at how little is being done, not just by right-wingers, but by supposed leftists. Again, guys, the world is ending. Like, literally, scientists are saying that. They are literally saying the world is ending. <laughs> My original emotional reaction defending that person came out of the same despair that feeling that people do not really care. My hometown, the places where I grew up, will be underwater by 2100. That is basically a fact at this point. I got a lot of people saying that there are plenty of people who do believe in climate change in Florida who are fighting it. I know I'm one of those people, not as much as some, but I have participated in volunteering related to the environment. It just seems though that there isn't that many people involved, especially when you compare climate activism to movements like Black Lives Matter, which got far more attention and activism. And of course, these movements are important, but again, no lives will exist without addressing climate change. Black lives, white lives, there will be no life if we do not fight climate change. With the same intensity and numbers that came out for movements like Black Lives Matter. Now you might be asking what kind of standard should there be? How much should it be talked about? How much should it be addressed? And I don't know what the bare minimum should be exactly, but I definitely know that it isn't being met. For example, in Sean's 69 videos on his channel, judging by the thumbnails at least, he hasn't spared a single one to talking directly about climate change or environmental justice. Not one. I want to say here that I think Sean is not just a good YouTuber, but one of the single best there is. His JK Rowling videos, his Nuking Japan video, masterpieces. I'm not trying to start shit, it's just annoying to me that people as smart as Sean can't spend at least some of their energy actually trying to address by far the most important issue facing the world instead of focusing on people who, to me, could be interpreted as just really despairing in their rage over the irreversible damage that climate change will cause and is already causing. Especially someone with a platform so huge and influential. Someone who could make some change, however slight. I don't just want to pick on Sean because I think this issue goes well beyond Sean. Climate just seems like such a non-thing in BreadTube. At least relative to how serious of an issue it is overall. Yes, there are great YouTube channels about climate change like Climate Town, but none of the really big personalities focus on it much at all. Big Joel, for example, has been around for years, hasn't made a single video about climate change. PhilosophyTube, HBomberGuy, and ContraPoints have all made a video specifically discussing climate change, and all of them are fantastic videos. Sell their houses to who, Ben? Fucking Aquaman! They are at least addressing the issue, which I respect, but I would argue that they should still be doing more to draw attention to these problems, that there are more videos well worth making on the topic or in similar topics relating to ecology. If you go to the smaller but still great YouTubers, it's much the same. It's just not really a big thing on YouTube. You can argue that maybe climate change isn't as sexy of a topic to talk about as other issues, and that as such these types of videos might be likely to get less views. But this argument, if anyone makes it, would just show that you're not really a leftist, that helping people in the world is secondary rather than primary to the idea of making money and growing your audience. One might also argue that it's not these people's purview or their focus, 
but I just think that the complete collapse of the Earth's biosphere actually should be everyone's focus. Marx says that to be radical we must grab things by the root, and that root is class, but it's also the more literal roots, the environment. Red tubers consider themselves leftists, and nothing is more leftist in the end than environmental advocacy. Nothing is more humanitarian, more anti-bigotry. Now I know people will say, oh, you're guilt tripping, who are you to criticize me for what I choose to do? You can ignore the criticism, that's your choice, but if you accept the premise that nothing on earth can exist or exist well without a functioning climate, which you obviously should then what am I guilt tripping you for other than something that is extremely urgent and important and worth criticizing for? To say otherwise is to be to some extent a climate change denier because you are in denial about the sheer scope of the devastation climate change will cause. Now obviously if you're working a full-time job, you don't really have any time or energy, then do you survive? What I'm saying is if you do have the time or resources to advocate for anything and are not advocating for the fight against climate change just as fervently, if you're donating money to any causes and not instead donating at least as much to organizations fighting climate change, I would argue you are failing to advocate fully for whatever you're advocating for. There's a list of organizations you can volunteer with in the description, and there's also projects you can fund in the description as well. If you don't want to personally get involved because it's traumatic and painful to think about it at all, fine. Just donate money instead. Let other people handle things with your money and don't think about it, but do something. Of course, while advocacy of any kind, donations of any kind are urgent and needed and good. The problem, of course, with all of this is that in the end, this is all just a matter of delaying the planet's doom rather than truly saving it. The main advocacy we can do to save the planet is to work towards ending capitalism, given that capitalism and degrowth, and degrowth is the only thing that will save the planet, are fundamentally incompatible. And the fact that all these studies and data relating to the permanent destruction of the entire Earth have just been largely ignored for literally decades proves it. As Engels writes in The Dialectics of Nature, to regulate our relationship with nature requires a complete revolution in our hitherto existing mode of production and simultaneously a revolution in our whole contemporary social order. In the end, if humanity ends up descending into a dark age or is wiped out completely, I will at least die knowing I tried the bare minimum to do something. Knowing that I tried to warn people. Will you? Well, that's about all I have for this video. Please feel free to like, subscribe, and comment if you want more videos like this one, or subscribe to me on my Patreon. Thank you also to my current patrons, my $8 patron, Alexander Bernstein, as well as my $4 patrons, Billy from Texas, Citizen Smith, Comrade Gatsy, Famous Horse, Jacob Thompson, Piebot5000, Professional Tanky, Richard Scott Wickton, Shivaru, and also my two and one dollar patrons, John Trimbeth, Oliver Lundell Bone, Dust Ballet, Matthew Foy, and Southpaw99. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.